You have something special. You have greatness in you. I got a message for you. And I want you to share it with others. Don't be selfish. Because I want to talk to you about shifting your focus and managing your mind and the thoughts that you have. Because when we wake up in the morning, advertisers are competing for the real estate of our minds. And what we have to do is begin to be proactive in programming ourselves rather than allowing ourselves to be programmed by the world. That's why we're told, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you agree with me, I want you to put yes in the comment section. Just put yes, make a brother feel good. <laughs> and, 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 and something else, see there, there are things that's gonna happen Yes, beyond our reach. And it's important that you be okay with that. That that's God's business. You do what you can do, handling your business and those things that you can handle. And those things that's beyond you, you have to let go or be dragged. Because there are a lot of stuff. This this thing called life where we are, we've never been here before. I feel like uh, Mother Teresa, she said, Lord, I know you know how much I can bear. I just wish you didn't have so much confidence in me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. So I want to share some thoughts with you. People ask me, what do you do during tough times? What do you, how do you handle it? Well, they asked the right person as I speak to you. I have a, this trophy here from Cancer Centers of America. It is a trophy that you don't want. It's called the uh, Cancer Center Perseverance Award. Perseverance. I'm a 29-year fourth-stage prostate cancer conqueror. All right? So you don't want that award. Woo! <laughs> Some awards you want, some awards you don't want. But I'm glad to get the award because I'm still here. <laughs> so the question becomes, how do you do that? How do you keep a, a positive mindset in the face of a prognosis and say, you're on the way out? How do you deal with that? Well, number one, what's very important is to understand this that at get any given time, we have the power to choose. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. We have the power to choose, to focus on the things that are not what we want them to be, or focus on what we can do to create the things that we want in our lives. See, because at the end of the day, life is a fight for territory. And once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. So I deliberately, when I wake up in the morning, I'm grateful. I say, I'm great and grateful. I'm still here. There are a lot of people that didn't wake up this morning. They're taking a dirt nap. Hello. <laughs> so I'm grateful. I'm not in pain. You can hear my voice. I can still serve at 77. I can still make an impact, all right? So what you have to do is face this. Every day is not going to be a good day, but there's some good in every day. So here's my challenge to you. Look for the good. I ain't playing with you. I'm coming for you right now. Look for the good because it's here. And and then just take the time to savor it. What most people do, and this is crucial, they leave their minds open like a, a universal garbage can and taking in stuff and information that they can't do anything about. I, I support the Ukrainians without any question. I pray for them. I support them. I will contribute to anything to help people who are being displaced. But I will not watch the news on that. It's too negative. I just, I'm not going to inundate my mind with stuff 
that does not build me up. You remember that song, Don't Let Nobody Bring Me No Bad News. If you if you can if, if you can identify with what I'm saying up in here. Uh, my brother, I was talking to him the other day, my twin brother, and I can hear him cranking up to give me some bad news. I said, hold just a minute, hold just a minute. I paused for a minute. I said, you know what? I'm going to circle back with you. And so he thought I hung up, and I heard him say in the background, he's not going to call me back. He's right. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. He's about to tell me some problem about somebody. I don't know that person. Why do I need that in my mind? I remember a story about a, a very brilliant man. We we all have heard his name, Einstein, Albert Einstein. And he, he was asked for his phone number. And he went to a payphone booth and, and went into the telephone booth and opened up a telephone book. And I said, wait a minute, you asked that. You don't know your phone number? He said, I don't keep information in my mind that's not usable to me. I don't call myself. Why should I put some stuff in my mind about things I can't do anything about other than saying, mm, wow, I'm sorry, sorry to hear that. But I will take some things in that inspire me, things that encourage people that I can use in my presentations. I tell speakers, and I train speakers, and some of you out there, I want you to listen to me, and I'm going to give you a, a, a strategy on how to become a powerful global voice of transformation. You got to be a good listener. I listen for stories that encourage, that motivate, that inspire. I, I, this There's a story in the internet of a little eight-year-old Ukrainian girl who went up to a soldier who had all of his gear and his rifle and everything he needs to kill somebody. And this little girl unarmed, but all she had was her fist. And she went up and she punched him. Now, of course, she didn't cause any damage. But she was striking a blow for give me liberty or give me death. I know you can kill me. I know you don't value my life. I know y'all just blew up a hospital with children in there. I know that. But we're fighting for our freedom here. And, and, and all I got is this right here. And I'm going to come up there. I'm going to punch you with everything I got. Now, that's inspiring. I want to hear those kind of stories. Tell me stories that I can share that can lift people's spirits, that can encourage people. Because see, at the end of the day, we don't know how strong we are until we have to be strong. You don't know enough about yourself to be a wimp. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You are more than a conqueror. And when you just be with that, I'm more then a conqueror, I'm made in the likeness and image of God. It doesn't get any better than that. I've been given authority and dominion over everything on the face of the earth. These are not just words to be read, but to be lived from. People say, practice what you preach. No, preach what you practice. Sometimes you have to get an attitude with yourself and, and begin to realize we're more blessed and we give ourselves credit for being and we must focus on that when i get up in the morning i have a gratitude list i have things that i write down that i'm grateful for that you can hear me that i can see i got my my nephew james he went stone blind my twin brother's son blind at 38 i'm grateful that i have the ability to see and to hear and that I can pick up my body weight. There was a period of time I was being rolled around in a wheelchair because of sciatica pain and the pain from the little C, cancer. So there's going to always be some stuff. Victor Franco, he talks about it in Man's Search for Meaning. He said, you either in a problem or you just left one or you headed toward one. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. What is that armor? Faith. 
and faith not tested can't be trusted. Perseverance, you're going to go through some stuff. Lady, she had a car accident and her neck was broken. She said, my neck was broken, but my neck didn't break me. Although she's a quadriplegic, she's still living a productive life. She's not somewhere feeling sorry for herself. The other thing is, you got to watch who you talk to. I think I have a friend named Ed Foreman who just passed a few weeks ago. And it's the first seminar that I went to. Ed had something that he did. And at first, I didn't get it. Ed will never ask you, how you doing? I said, Ed, why don't you ask how people are feeling? He said, because they might tell you. <laughs> He said, no. He said, I just tell him, you're doing great. You look better than this time than the last time I saw you. <laughs> he said, I compliment him. I find something good to say because people want to tell somebody about what they're dealing with, but you want to call forth those things that be not as though they were. Do you believe that? Are you down with that? Do you understand what I'm sharing with you right now? It's a part of, of what we have been told, and, and it's something that we don't want to just hear it, but to live from that place, to stand in that place of power. I believe that we're here for a reason. And all this stuff that's happening, that God is in the midst of it, but therefore take unto you the whole armor that we've got to stand up inside ourselves and face it head on call life. And sometimes I have to get an attitude with myself because sometimes things get to me. Got a son who's bipolar schizophrenic. And I had to realize, hey, that's his trip. He doesn't want to take his medication. He's 38 years old. That's beyond me. That's him and God. They got to work that thing out. I'm not going to stress myself out about some stuff that I can't control. Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot control, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. See, it's easy to say those nice little words when you don't have any pain in your body and your bills are paid, you're not facing foreclosure, or your relationship is working out fine, and your children act like they have good sense. It's easy to say those things. But when life knocks, when life challenges you, that's, that's when you have to pull and call on the whole armor. That's when you have to be, under, be able to understand, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Oh, boy. This thing called life. I, I saw something with some actors they were talking about. Had they learned when they were younger that whatever you're going through right now, if it's bad, if it's painful, if it's tragic, guess what? This too shall pass. And whatever you're going through right now, if it's a celebration, you're happy, you are joyful, things are going great, you feel good in your body, you're physically capable to doing whatever you want to do, your relationship is working out fine. This too shall pass. <laughs> what do you mean? Life is a roller coaster. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes things go well, sometimes they don't go so well. And we have the power to be an observer and not buy into it and decide, wait a minute, I'm going to find some good in this. I'm going to wrestle with this angel until I find my blessing up in here. Life is a fight for territory. And once you stop fighting for what you want, peace of mind, for your relationship, for your health, once you stop fighting for what you want, a good night's sleep, a relationship that that that's where you love each other and care about each other and got each other's back. Once you are unwilling to fight for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. I ain't playing with you. 
I'm telling you what I know. You have something special. And even if you don't believe me, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to say it until I get through to you. Why? Because that's my mission. I believe live your life the way you want to leave your life. And that's what I'm doing. My goal is to leave my life inspiring you, encouraging you, lifting spirits, reminding you of the greatness that you have in you, reminding you that you are treasure, you are masterpiece because you're a piece of the master. Mm. Oh, behave. Hello. <laughs> so having said those words, I want you to know, Tyrone and I, my little squirrel friend, you have something special. You have greatness in you. Bye for now. <laughs> oh, behave. <laughs>